In this video, I'm going to show you how to efficiently render 100,000 rows in React. We're going to do this with very little code, but a lot of performance. Also, by the way, I just launched Project React, which is a course where you learn React by building a real world project. If you want to check it out, if you're interested, it'll be the first link in the description. So here we have a component that has one piece of state, users. These users are getting initialized by this function here, create users. If we go to the definition of create users, this is a simple function that takes in two properties, two arguments from and to, and will loop from and to, and then just return for every iteration, an object with the ID property and a name property of a specific user. Then in the JSX over here of the app component, we're taking those users and then we're mapping over each user. And for each user, we're rendering the user card over here. The user card is a very simple component. It receives a user as props and then just renders a div with a user.name. Now, obviously doing it this way, taking all of these 100,000 users and then just straight up rendering them is going to be horrible for performance. You really shouldn't be doing this in a React application. There's a better way. To make this performant, we're going to be using a virtualization library. Now, virtualization is a very simple concept. It only means rendering a subset of the items instead of all of them. And in our case, for our users, what makes sense for us is to only render the users that are currently visible in the viewport. The library that we're going to be using in this video is React Virtuoso. This is a very popular and also well-maintained library that makes it really simple to add virtualization in React. We're going to be using some of the components that it provides to improve the performance of our app and render all of our users. So first, let's open up our terminal and let's install React Virtuoso. So we're going to do pnpm install and then React Virtuoso. This is going to install in the project and make it available for us to use. Then we're going to go in our code and we're going to start making some changes. The first change that we want to do is actually remove all of these users because now we're going to be using Virtuoso to render all of our users. So we're going to remove all of them and then here at the top, we're going to do import and then Virtuoso from React Virtuoso, it is this import right here. Now, as I mentioned, React Virtuoso gives you access to more components than just Virtuoso. We're going to look at those a little bit later in this video. Then we can use Virtuoso in our actual components. So we can do Virtuoso like this, and we can self-close the tag because it doesn't need anything else. Now we're going to have to provide this three props. The first prop is going to be data. This is the actual data that we want this component to render. In our case, it's going to be the users. So we can just pass users like so. Then we're going to need a function that is going to run to render each individual user, right? So that is going to be item content. This is going to be a function. And this function, as you can see here, takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be the index, which is a number. And the second argument is going to be the data, which is of type user. In our case, we're not going to be needing the index. So we're just going to access the data, which is going to be a user. So we can come here, put an underscore to signify that we're not using the first argument, comma, and then we're going to do user like so. And then the only thing that we have to do is just render the user card component, just like we had before. So we're going to do user card, and we're going to pass user and we're going to do user like so, and then close the user card component. Now it's important to note that in this case, we did not have to provide a key, which is very typical when you're iterating in React and in JSX. The reason why we don't have to provide a key is because Virtuoso is actually providing one for us behind the scenes so that we don't have to do it. Now Virtuoso also requires one more property, which is the actual height of its container. It's going to use the height to determine which elements are currently visible and which ones it should render. Now the documentation say that you should do this to the style prop so we can do style like this and give it an object and height of 200 for example but in our case we're actually using tailwind and probably you are too so i want to show you how to do this in tailwind because there is one little extra step involved so to do this in tailwind remove the style and come here and as usual class name and here we're going to do exclamation mark and then h and then 200 pixels like so the reason why we're putting an exclamation mark here is because if we don't provide a height through a style prop in virtuoso virtuoso is actually going to set one automatically and in that case that height property that it sets automatically is going to have priority over this class name over here. So the only way that I found to override that is to put important, the exclamation mark marks this as important. And now this height is going to override the height that it sets and everything is going to work as you expect. And with this, we can actually come here and do pnpm dev and see our application in action. So I'm going to come here to the browser. I'm going to refresh. And there we go. We have all of our users over here, all 100,000 of them. And I can scroll without any performance implication. I can come here at the right and actually manually scroll using the scroll 
control bar here. And as you can see, there is no performance implication. I'm efficiently rendering 100,000 users, and this is buttery smooth. So now let's play around with this and see what else we can do. Let's go back here to the code. And what I want to do now is I want to create a button that will randomly scroll to any element in the array, just to see exactly how performant this is. To do that, the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually create a ref because we're going to be using that ref for virtuoso and calling one function on it, which is going to be the scroll to index function that is going to allow us to scroll to a specific index in the list. So we can come here and write const virtuoso ref. This is going to be use ref. We can import this from React. And now if you are working in TypeScript, you're going to want to provide this a type. This is going to be virtuoso handle. You can import this from React virtuoso. If you're not working in TypeScript, just skip this step. It's totally fine. And then we're going to put null as the initial value of the ref. Then we're going to come here and we're going to do ref equals virtuoso ref like so. Now we created the ref and we passed it to virtuoso. Then we're going to come here and create a button. So we're going to do a normal HTML button. So button like this, we're going to put scroll. And then here we're going to do on click and we're going to pass this a function. And this function is going to call virtuoso ref dot current question mark because this can be null dot scroll to index like so. And here we can give it the actual index to scroll to. So we're going to do index. And here we just want a random number. So we're going to do math.random. And we're going to do math.random times users dot length like so. So math.random returns a random number between zero and one. And we're multiplying this by the length of the users, which is 100,000, which is going to give us a random number between zero and 100,000. And the last thing that we want to do is put here the align property, which is going to allow us to customize how we want the actual element that is being scrolled to to align. Do we want it at a center? Do we want it at the end? Or do we want it at the start? In our case, we want it at the start. Finally, I'm going to add one more thing here, just a class name for the button to put margin bottom four, just so that we have a little bit of space between the button and the actual virtuoso contents. You can add this in any way that you want. You could put space Y here in this div. It's totally fine. I'm just adding a simple margin. Let that be the end of it. And now if we go back to the application, we have our button here and we can press scroll. And as you can see, this is scrolling to a random element in the list, but it's instantaneous. It doesn't have any performance implication. It doesn't have any lag. I can spam this button as much as I want and it's scrolling instantaneously. This is great. And the amount of code that it took us to implement all this functionality is about 10 to 15 to 20 lines of code. It's not much to achieve great performance with 100,000 items in React. Now, if you wanted to make this scroll a little bit smoother, which probably you would want to do in your application, you could put behavior and then smooth. This is going to make the scroll behave smoother. So we can come here, we can now scroll. And as you can see, we're scrolling between all these different items. And as you can see, I don't know if you spotted that, but at some point, some of these items disappeared. That's how Virtuoso works. It essentially takes all of the items using the height, it calculates which ones are visible, and only renders the ones that are currently visible on the screen, thus saving performance. It's not going to render all 100,000 of them, just these ones that are currently visible on the screen, and perhaps a little bit of offset on, e on each side, just so that you don't have any jumps when you're actually scrolling very fast. Now let's take this one step further and convert this into a table, which is a very common use case. So for this, we're going to have to replace Virtuoso with the table Virtuoso component. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, React Virtuoso actually exports different components that we can use. So we can come here and we can do table Virtuoso and it's going to be this one right here. And then we can just remove Virtuoso, we're not going to need it. And we can just add table here. And this is going to work exactly as we had it before. But now table Virtuoso actually gives us a few more options as props that we can configure. Now, since this is going to render a table, it would probably make sense to come in here to user card and actually render table elements. So instead of a div here, we can just do TD like so. And actually, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this and add the user's ID. Because remember, the user here also has an ID. I want to show multiple elements in this table. So we're going to create a fragment here and we're going to put it at the end like this. Then we're going to save, take this entire line and do user.id over here like so. Then we're going to come back here to app and we're going to want to add the table header. So the way that you do that is you add fixed table fixed header content, this is a prop. And this again is only available because we are using table virtuoso. This would not be available using the simple basic virtuoso component. So here we're going to do a function and that is going to return to us some react notes. So we can put a parenthesis and we can actually return. So we're going to return 
table row. And then here we're going to do table header and we're going to do one for the ID and one for the name. For both of these, I'm just going to do class name and we're going to do width and then that's going to be, let's say 150 pixels. Then we're going to do background gray scale and that's going to be 700. And I also want to align the text to the left. So we're going to do text left like so. And actually I can just replace all of this with this because we're going to want the same for both of these headers. And here we're going to put ID and here we're going to put name just so that we know that this is the ID and that this is the name. Now, if you go back to the application, we can see that we have something that looks a lot more like a table, right? We have ID and name as the header, and then we can scroll and the ID and the name are actually fixed on the header and do not move just like you would expect in a normal table. What's even cooler is that the scroll function still works exactly as normal, right? This is exactly the same functionality, just that now we're using the table component. That's it. Now you can customize this in any way that you want. You can provide anything that you want for the fixed header content. You can render your actual table row in any way that you want and you can really add some cool functionalities with this it's completely up to you and the apis that they offer make it really easy to do virtually anything no pun intended now the last thing that i want to do is show you how to handle paginated data because as cool as it is to be able to render efficiently a hundred thousand rows in a real world project you're probably not going to be doing that you're going to be fetching your data in chunks of multiple pages and to do that it's actually quite simple the first thing that we want to do is in this create users instead of looping from zero to 100 thousand we want to loop to something more reasonable perhaps 0 to 20. so the way that we do that is we replace the syntax and we come here and just call it as an hour function and then we're going to be able to call it here and actually provide some parameters so we can do from 0 to 20 like so this is not only going to return to us the first 20 items, the first 20 users. Then we can come here at the bottom and we can create a new function that is going to fetch the next page. So we're going to do function fetch next page. And this is going to be a function. And the only thing that this will do is this will do const new users equals create users. And then we're going to do users.length and then users.length plus 20 to simulate fetching the next page of data. And then all that we have to do is set users and we're going to set the users to an array that's going to be dot 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 and then users and then dot 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 new new users like so. And finally, we need to take this fetch next page function and connect it to Virtuoso and have it call it whenever it reaches the end. And to do that, there is a simple prop we can just do and reached and then we can pass it fetch next page and now this is automatically going to work so let's go back to our application now we have our table as you can see here on the right we have a bigger scroll bar which indicates to us that we have fewer items and then as i get to the bottom the scroll bar diminishes in size we're fetching the next page of items as soon as i scroll if i keep scrolling we're always going to be fetching the next page of items and they get appended to the already existing users that we have this is how you essentially very simply achieve paginated results which again is probably what you're going to be ending up doing in a real world project now also in a real project you will probably be fetching this data from an api which means that you would have to handle asynchronous operations and again that is pretty simple you would just come here and then you would do const is loading set is loading and then we're going to do use use state and then we're going to put this to false right then we just need to convert this function to an asynchronous function so we're going to do async like this like this and then here we're just going to await new promise right and then we're going to do resolve and then this is going to set time out and it's going to resolve after 100 1000 milliseconds like so so now this function will do the exact same thing we'll create the users of the next page and then we'll await one second and then after one second we'll update the users with the newly added users and then before all of this happens let's just make a little bit of space here we can do set is loading to true and then set is loading to false as well and then we're going to set the users here and then to actually use this is loading property to show something to the user as a loading is happening what we can do is we can come here and add fixed footer content this is again specific to the table if you're using the normal virtuoso component this will have a different api check the docs to see how and then here we're only going to do is loading and we're going to do question mark and then if so we're going to return a function that is going to return a div that says loading 
dot 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 and then we're going to close the div like so otherwise we're just going to return undefined because we do not need to, to show anything if loading is not true and actually we should probably do the same thing so we should do class name and then background grayscale 700 just to make this a little bit nicer to see on the ice now if you go back to the application and we refresh as soon as we scroll down we actually have something here we have a loading that is showing up for one second as our fetch is happening and then we're actually seeing the next batch of data right this is something that looks a lot closer to what you would do in a real world project and this is how you would do it obviously this doesn't look really good this is a very basic and primitive UI, but the point was not to show you how to design an actual application, but to show you how to efficiently render 100,000 rows and realistically any amount of rows super efficiently in React in a way that is super customizable and very easy to work with. And also, if you're still here watching this video at this point, first of all, thank you so much. And second of all, it probably means that you really care about learning React, which is good because I just launched Project React, which is a course where you learn React by building a real world project. I've honestly put my heart and soul into this course Course, this is everything that I know and learned, all of the hard lessons that I've acquired over the last eight years of working with React, all put in a simple course that is super effective, super efficient, and will literally teach you everything that you need to know step by step from start to finish on what it takes to build an actual real world project with React. If you're interested, once again, it'll be the first link in the description. Trust me on this, you will not regret it. This is the best React course that you can get for yourself. And the things that I've planned for this in version two, which you will also get as part of this if you get it now are out of this world so once again first thing in the description i would really love to see you on there and i promise you you're not going to regret it if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos just like this one make sure to leave this video a big thumbs up you can also click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch a different video of mine that youtube seems to think that you're really going to enjoy and with that being said my name has been darius cousin this is cousin solutions thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video ciao ciao